Hi, my name is Timothy Tan. I am the head of Singapore Media Academy. Thank you for taking time to join us in this uh, sharing session where we'll talk about who's the boss. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to share some short stories. Uh, my background started when uh, I was in the, uh, my background in media started as an assistant director uh, with the English Channel and uh, I was the assistant director for some uh, TV dramas that uh, you might know, you might not know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I remember something very close to my heart where I remember it was about 11 p.m. at night. I think one of my panelists will know this story. Uh, yeah, it was 11 p.m. at night and uh, all of a sudden the director turned around and said, OK, where's my police car? I'm like, I looked at the script and I said, there is no police car. And then he said, yeah, but look at look at uh, this dialogue. You know, one of the bystanders was a policeman and there's supposed to be a police car. And so the director gave me about um, all 45 minutes when they were breaking for supper. Uh, to come up with a police car. Okay, I won't tell you the end of the story. I can tell you this. I did successfully manage to get a police car and we finished the shoot on time. Uh, that was one of the most important or most memorable experiences I've had as an assistant director. And, uh, in terms of sound, right, who decides, you know, what soundtracks get used, you know, what type of uh, sound design goes into the overall direction of the film? Is it much D driven by the script? Is it much driven by uh, the production team or the producers? There is, we will definitely follow, have to follow the script, right? And it's sort of the Bible for us, but we, the, the, the flexibility really comes, it depends on uh, the sound supervisor that you have or uh, the assistant producer who will often come down and you know do spotting sessions with you and will sit down and listen to the sounds that you've put in and go, I like this, okay? And when he or she says, I don't like this, then it really depends on the person or the type of project, you know? Sometimes you could have uh, the flexibility to negotiate, oh, how about this on the spot? You know, sometimes we say, nope, take that sound out. Obviously, when something is written, uh, do you imagine all facets of uh, the, you know, uh, the, the film and television come to life? You know, do, you, do script writers actually think about what sort of music goes into it? What sort of sound goes into a, a certain scene or dialogue? Uh, you know, what sort of actors uh, should come on board to play certain roles? Do, do script writers also have influence on casting, for instance? Yeah, you know, I just want to understand that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it helps to have that in mind and I think one of the basic principle and this is probably related to um, one of your later question about um, you know one of the worst um, most malu moments um, I think one of the basic principle and it's something that I always um, re repeat and repeat and repeat class is that um, if you don't write it it won't be there so you have to write it in order for it to be there. I think that's what happened to Tim's uh, police car. A police <laughs> man doesn't immediately say that there will be a police car because when you break down the script, the police car is not going to appear on a prop list, but the pol only the police man is. So if you want it to be there and if you visualize it, you ambition it has to be there, um, you have to write it down. Yeah, leave so, nothing to imagination, right? You do all yeah, the imagining, but you yes. obviously have to articulate it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you have to imagine it and you have to articulate it. So I think that is the very basic um, skill that is required. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, when I first joined the industry, um, similar to Tim, actually, I was also a first AD. And interestingly, on the set, right, I remember um, I was, because actually as an AD, it's, it's quite an entry-level position, right? Although it sounds like a big term, right? This is in the government sector. But anyway, on the set, um, as an AD, right? I remember going on the set, I was very, very new, but the crew uh, turned around to me, uh, turned around and asked me, it's so boss, what are we supposed to do next? You know? And then even the director, you would think the boss, right? The director is the boss on the set, right? So, Okay, boss, what are we supposed to do now? So, and so I felt, you know, I felt two things. I felt a bit emboldened, you know, because, hey, you, you know, you call, right? Um, and then at the same time, I was a little humble. 
so I always remember this because um, I always remember that no matter how small the position is, right, you're given a certain responsibility, you do it well, um, um, and then on the side, you're supposed to time manage as an assistant director. That's the reason why they would say you're boss, because you're, you're bossing as a right, supposed to, right? So that if you are able to, um, you know, if you're very responsible in that position, right? Um, yeah, you, you, will be, you, you will be in that management um, state of mind. Okay, I was very curious about how uh, television productions um, were, were created and then I really enjoy you know, watching. So, so it's an interest and it just happened that I, I actually received a call from um, a friend. He said, I want to come and try out for this role. So it's, it wasn't, a, it was, I wasn't formally trained at all. And so whatever I studied, whatever I majored in school, was, you know, it's got nothing to do with what I'm doing today. However, I think the, um, uh, you, you could say the, um, we, we can still, we can still take whatever that was learned in school, you know, because I actually major in political science as well as uh, English literature. So I think there are some, there's a certain level of discipline. And at the end of the day, it's just how you apply it to whatever you're doing. Ah, Sean, you know, have you had your share of uh, something that happened for you was particularly challenging you know, or you might have uh, had 40 wings just, you know, having to think it through over and over again. Yeah. Well, there was one particular experience that kept me up at my desk for a long time, you know, kept me up at night. Um, I, I, was, I was new in, uh, in the industry and I hadn't gone to school for what I'm doing now yet. So it's, you know, uh, on the job OJT, as what Piao said. And I was a full time at a production studio. So I, I did basically anything, you know, I was a recording engineer, I was a mixing engineer, I was a Foley artist. So there was this project where I was recording um, a VO for a cartoon series. And so this guy came in and did his lines. So I was the one seated there and I recorded him, right? So there was this assistant, I, I can't remember whether it's a producer or AD or director, but, you know, because I'm used to being bossed around, I, I just kowtow out to everybody. Okay, yes, boss, sit down. You tell me what to do, I'll do. So there the, uh, the, the producer or the, the supervisor was telling me, okay, cut here, stop, we record. And then he was talking to the voice talent in the studio or in the live room, as we call it. And so when he says stop, so I stop recording, right? And he says, go, okay, go, right? And little did I know that he was actually trying to tell, the, talk to the VO artist, stop, repeat the line, da, 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 da. My, my role was to just record without stopping because I'm supposed to capture all the different takes just in case I capture a good take, right? But I followed his direction and that, that in short, uh, pissed the VO off when he had a good couple of good takes that I did not record, I failed to record as a result of that. Right. And, you know, behind in the room, same room, recording room, were all the investors, was my boss, and every, the whole world was there. The whole world that had the right to just take a knife and you're, you're fired was just right behind me. And that was a moment I could, yeah, remember. And it was difficult because I, I tried, I couldn't, you know, just press onto the mic and say, look, I just, I'm just taking directions. I can't. I couldn't yeah. Yeah. back then. Yeah. So uh, lesson learned, next time I just record and turn to the director, okay, it's recording. I'm going for my coffee, right? Just, yeah. <laughs> and no matter what they say, even stop, don't stop, right? I'm not going to stop, okay? I'll just edit it after. That's why assistant director, I think in the local industry, I think reputation is extremely important. And also the volume of work that you have done as an assistant director. I think uh, if you are an assistant director that has, that, that, that has done, uh, who has got a lot of experience managing large productions, then whenever there's a large production, people will think of you. Or if you're an assistant director that's really good in food commercials, right? Um, then, you know, your, in, your industry and your portfolio will call for you and will look for you.